I wish to thank uh, um, uh, Astute Medical for organizing this. And uh, I will start saying that uh, biomarkers of AKI seems to be today uh, one of the hot topics in the field uh, of, uh, uh, um, uh, let's say, nephrology and intensive care. And in fact, uh, the book that you have in your uh, bags will be actually uh, representing and presenting all the uh, consensus statement that were uh, done in Dublin about almost a year ago and subsequently in Venice uh, last December. As you might have seen in other slides, uh, today we somehow represent AKI as a clinical continuum, and we start from a normal kidney to an increased risk to move then into damage where we can actually evaluate biomarkers of structural injury. And then only later on in the history and the time frame of the syndrome, uh, GFR will decrease and kidney failure will appear uh, uh, making biomarkers of functional injuries such as creatinine and cystatin C uh, becoming significant. In this history, you may analyze different multiple time zones. And at the end of the story, if the damage starts at the molecular level, subsequently the cellular level is affected, only later on biomarker will appear and the clinical clock, in this case, is always late. So today we are used to diagnose clinically AKI while the story seems to begin much earlier. The secret today would be to link the uh, biomarker measurement uh, with the molecular and the cellular dysfunction and damage. And you will hear several times probably in this meeting that in the uh, life of one cell, there are several steps where actually any type of injury impose a check to the status of DNA to avoid that, that damaged cells would replicate and uh, perpetuate the damage. So uh, there are several points along the life of the cells, including uh, 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 the activation of specific molecules that today represent uh, the typical uh, damage molecule of uh, an injury occurring to the, uh, at the tubular level. In a recent paper, uh, patients affected by uh, different type of injuries but not having creatinine rising, however, displaying a positivity to biomarkers, they seem to have uh, a similar worse outcome compared to patients that have an overt AKI with an increase in creatinine. But much worse compared to patients who have an increase in creatinine but not an increase in uh, structural biomarkers. This means that we can identify today a new category of patients uh, with tubular damage without any dysfunction of the kidney. And this shows the condition in which biomarkers are positive, but rifle or AKI stages still result negative. In order to uh, comply, uh, to, you know, uh, yes, to, to cope with this uh, uh, new approach, uh, the new rifle system for classification of AKI and diagnostic criteria will include functional criteria, including serum creatinine and urine output on one side, and damage criteria on the other side, well, probably trend and threshold values for biomarkers represent the different level of severity. Uh, as it has been discussed uh, in other occasions, uh, baseline GFR and therefore creatinine can stay normal uh, in a wide spectrum of condition where you can lose up to 50% of the nephrons before creatinine increase. And therefore, only after this uh, insult overcome the renal functional reserve, uh, creatinine increase and becomes clinical. Before, all of these insults may stay subclinical, leading to damage of significant amount of nephrons without, however, leading to increase in serum creatinine. 
And uh, everything is uh, a kind of matching between susceptibility in the kidney and the level of exposure. If you have a very low susceptibility and very high renal functional reserve, even a very high and intense insult may not cross the border leading to clinical AKI. However, if your susceptibility is very high because your renal functional reserve is reduced, even a small insult may actually cross the border and lead to clinical domain AKI. Everything on this side of the curve remains subclinical, creatinine does not increase, but still an important insult may occur to the kidney. And here is the history when several kidney attacks, as uh, we wanted to call this uh, uh, episodes of insult to the kidney uh, reduce or damage the kidney, there might be a complete recovery or there might not be a complete recovery leading to a progressive kidney disease where at a certain point you will display actually chronic kidney disease and uh, uh, altered uh, uh, kidney function. This may have an important uh, reflection on uh, what are the endpoints for clinical trials. Can we satisfy ourselves today using as an endpoint uh, uh, doubling of serum creatinine or increasing serum creatinine? Can we talk about major adverse kidney events as in the paper of Kashani that was recently published? Should we speak in terms of kidney attack? I think we have a new perspective about this. But basically, including the concept of renal angina, which has been put forward by Ming Chawla and uh, Stu Goldstein, and we are now having a paper to be published uh, proving this concept, we have uh, a so-called creatinine domain, AKI, when you have rifle or akin stage one, two, and three, starting from 0.3 creatinine increase, going up until dialysis is needed. But below that level, we may have uh, uh, less than 0.3 creatinine increase and in fluid overload, or even zero creatinine increase, but uh, exceeding biomarker cutoff, or even showing a biomarker trend towards an increase. This area is called biomarker domain, and it is together with renal angina subclinical, while creatinine domain and urine output domain lead to what we, today we define as clinical domain. And Kate Eagle recommendation wanted to include this area of high risk in patient, starting from considering alternatives to different radiocontrast procedures, avoiding hyperglycemia, discontinuing nephrotoxic agents, and so on and so on. So in conclusion, I think that acute kidney injury is a severe condition that may be significantly worsening patient clinical outcomes. Its incidence depends on how you define it and how are your diagnostic criteria. Kidney damage and kidney dysfunction may coexist, or they may represent two separate entities in the clinical syndrome, and new biomarkers may contribute to discriminate between acute injury and acute dysfunction and to uncover conditions of subclinical AKI because, as we recently published, subclinical AKI is still AKI.